What is going on? Here's a preview of what we're going to talk about. This is a, a little spreadsheet breakdown, and I'm going to try to um, going to try to talk about whether it's better to go slower and save fuel, or go faster and do more miles. Um, let's let's talk about that. Let me let me switch back over to me, and I'm going to tell you what's going on with me. And this is probably going to take about five minutes, and then we'll go back to the uh, to the spreadsheet, and we'll break down some numbers and talk about some stuff. So, what happened with me this week? Um, so I left my house. I talked about most of this in in, in the last video. Uh, you know, I left my house uh, Sunday evening. I uh, went down to the drop yard. I ended up leaving the drop yard at like 1.30 in the morning, somewhere between 1 and 1.30, drove to Joplin, spent 11 hours waiting to get into the shop to get two lights on the trailer fixed, and then it took them two hours to fix it, so I was there for a total of 13 hours. Then I went over to the shipper to drop the trailer off because it's one of those loads where you drop the trailer off on Monday, they call you when it's ready on Tuesday. They get 24 hours to load it. So I was just going over there expecting to drop the trailer off, and they were like, well, we've already got all your freight pulled, and it's staged out on the dock. If you want to go ahead and bump the dock, we'll have you loaded in under, half, uh, under an hour. It actually took them less than 30 minutes to load me. So I was ready to go a day early, and I was like, that's awesome. Like, that was great. So, uh, but I didn't plan for that scenario, so I didn't sleep. So after they got me loaded, it was 7 p.m. And I woke up 7 p.m. Sunday night to leave my house. So I'd been awake for exactly 24 hours once they got me loaded. And I, my adrenaline was going. I was wide awake. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if I go to sleep right now. Let me just drive. And uh, if I get tired, I'll stop. 30 minutes later... I was yawning like crazy, so um, it took me about 15 minutes to find a place to pull over. It's one of those travel plaza rest area things at a on the toll road on 44 in Venita, Oklahoma, I think. Or it was the exit for Venita or close to it. Uh, so uh, stopped there, logged into the sleeper at 8 p.m., and I did not bother setting an alarm clock. I was like, you know what? I got the load a day early. I've been awake for, at this point, 25 hours. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sleep as long as I want. I went to sleep, and I slept so good and woke up after five hours, and I was wide awake. Just, you know how you, sometimes you wake up and you're just like, you know, most of the time when I wake up, I'm real groggy and I'm like, oh, I just want to lay here. I don't want to move. But I woke up after five hours and I was just wide awake. So I was like, all right, let's drive. So I got up, I played around on the computer and it took me like an hour before I started driving. So I woke up at 1 a.m., but I didn't start driving till 2 a.m. Uh, so drove on and drove through Tulsa. And then drove to Oklahoma City. And then Oklahoma City, I topped off fuel. And then I kept on... I, t I think I also took a 30 there. And then I kept on driving. And I made it to, I believe, Santa Rosa. There's a TA um, in, in New Mexico. I think it's the easternmost TA on I-40. And I believe it's Santa something. I think it's Santa Rosa. There's a TA there. And that's where I stopped and took a 10. Uh, I had, I still had an hour or two left on my drive time, but I just got tired of it. The traffic was getting really bad and it was raining really hard and I just got tired of, of you know, dealing with that crap. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stop here. Um, so I stopped there, took a 10 and that's where I started my drive shift for the drive shift I just ended and took off from Santa Rosa drove across New Mexico, Arizona, and uh, now I'm in Tonopah, Arizona, just west of Phoenix at the TA, the, the TA in Tonopah. This is the TA that I was at for like the month of December. 
I took a load with USA Truck out to Phoenix to Tolson, Arizona. I think I picked it up in Springfield, Missouri, delivered it in Tolson, Arizona. And I was hoping to get some kind of unicorn load out of Southern California. And I sat here for three or four weeks waiting for them to post a good load. And they never posted a good load coming out of Southern California. And then I ended up just deadheading uh, to the house. It was like twelve or 1,400 miles that I deadheaded home. It was so bad. Um, but I enjoyed my time here at the TA in Tonopah. This is a, a really nice TA. Their restaurant is amazing. Um, I ate at this restaurant a lot during that month. Oh, man. This is a good, good. This, this is a really nice TA. I like it. But um, that, that's got you caught up. That's where I'm at. I, I stopped here at this TA. It is um, Wednesday, June 30th. What is the local time right now? It is it's 7.02 a.m. right now. 7.02 a.m. in Arizona. We, they're on Pacific time right now because Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time, which, oh, my God, I hate daylight savings. That's a whole other video. I wish they would get rid of that stupid crap. But it's 7.02 a.m. I've been here for approximately an hour and uh, that's got you caught up with where I'm at. I am uh, planning. I don't know what my plan is. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I'm about five hours from my delivery in San Diego. And I don't know when I'm going to leave. My 10-hour break will be up at about 4 p.m. I don't know if I'm going to leave at 4 p.m. or if I'm going to wait till later. I don't know what I'm going to do. The problem is parking. If I deliver at like 9 p.m. in San Diego, after the delivery, where am I going to go? Um, I'm going to have a really rough time finding a place to park. So, I don't know. I'll get it figured out. I have a lot of time to deliver this load. Uh, I have to have it delivered by July 5th. <laughs> Basically, I can deliver it any time before July 5th. Uh, but, I don't know. I'll get that figured out later. So... Let's switch over to the spreadsheet, and let's see um, my breakdown to try to help me. I was trying to figure out, is it worth it to travel at a slower speed and save and get better miles per gallon? Is, is that better than, um, you know, just traveling at the speed limit? What, what's better, speed limit or not speed limit? So, what it comes down to is what the fuel cost is per gallon that you're paying and how much you're making per mile on the load. So, let's look at this number right here. So, let's say that you're driving for a mega carrier and you have one of those really shitty lease contracts it's like a flat rate contract a dollar a mile plus fuel surcharge so you're making a dollar thirty a mile that's what this is your rate per mile how much are you making per mile a dollar thirty a mile well what's fuel cost well if you're paying pump price then you're probably paying close to three dollars and fifty cents a gallon right now um, if you're not doing a very good job of, uh, you know, fuel route planning, if you don't have a good discount card, um, if, you know, this is like the worst case scenario is what I'm trying to, to, to calculate right here. So if you're paying really high fuel cost because you have a terrible discount card and you're really bad at route planning, then you're probably paying around 350 a gallon for fuel. And if you're working for a shitty mega carrier, then you're getting about $1.30 a mile. So, now obviously I'm talking about owner-operators because do company drivers give a shit about any of this? No, they don't. It doesn't matter to company drivers. They're not paying for fuel. It, like, it, it's, there, there's, there's like no guessing game on whether it's more beneficial for a company driver to be able to go faster or slower. It's always more beneficial for a company driver to go faster. They always make more money when they go faster because they don't have any fucking expenses. <laughs> Going faster means more money. Um, but we're trying to figure out for owner-operators that are paying the fuel cost, 
is it worth it to go faster or should we be going slower? So if you're in this shitty mega carrier contract paying these terrible fuel prices, what are you making per hour? You're making $60 and 40 cents per hour. Now, I'm not calculating in all of your potential expenses in this, like, this net per hour is not your, like, true net income per hour. This is just your net per hour based on how much you're making per hour on the load and how much you're paying per hour in fuel. Those are the only two things we're taking into consideration because a mega carrier, um, you know, somebody driving for one of these shitty mega carrier contracts is not making $60.40 per hour. <laughs> um, once all of their expenses come out, um, they're, they're making much lower than that uh, because they have pretty damn high uh, costs associated with everything. But um, anyway, this is just a basic breakdown because we're just trying to calculate cost and, and you know, how much you make, uh, it, you know, I just said what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out if it's worth it to go faster or should we be going slower? So you're making $60 and 40 cents per hour. If you're going 72 miles per hour. Okay. So how did I come up with this very first column? This is based off of me driving from Oklahoma city to Tonopah. So in Oklahoma city, I topped off fuel. And then when I got here to Tonopah, I topped off fuel again. I put in 137 gallons, 137.429 gallons. That's how many gallons I put in here in Tonopah. So that's how many gallons of fuel I used between Oklahoma City and Tonopah. And the distance, according to Google, from not city to city, but address to address, from TA to TA, is 1,028 miles. So I used 1,028 miles and 137.429 gallons uh, to come out with how many miles per gallon I'm getting. Now, I subtracted two gallons for APU usage. I estimate that I used about two gallons of fuel running the APU um, between here and there. So it doesn't make a huge difference if I put that back in. Uh, so, like, I can, I can throw that back in, but it, it makes very little difference. It still puts me at around seven and a half miles per gallon. Um, let me show you what it does. If I if I change it to 137, it takes it from 759 to 748. I lose a tenth of a mile per gallon. Um, so, I mean, we can leave it at that. It's not really going to make much difference. It's, it's negligible. But, um, so what's my cost per mile on this? Wait a second. Holy shit. Um, so my cost per mile is really high because... What I'm paying for fuel is really high. So my fuel cost is $3.50 per gallon. And I'm getting 7.6 miles per gallon. So that's costing me $0.46 cents per mile in fuel cost. Well, what if I slowed down from 72 miles per hour, which all of this right here, this is what I just did. This is like real data. Um, now, the rate per mile is, and the fuel cost... Those are not what I... I'll put my numbers in here in a minute. But as far as the miles per gallon, the gallons and the miles right here, all of this is what I just did. That's how I came up with this uh, 7.59 miles per gallon. That's what I just did. Now, I've only got 9,000 pounds in the trailer, so I'm basically running empty. So that's a pretty shitty uh, fuel mileage or rate per mile or miles per gallon. I'm sorry. That's pretty shitty miles per gallon for almost running empty. Um, 
But yeah, that's my cost per mile, or my, yeah, my cost per mile for fuel is 46 cents per mile. My cost per hour, I'll talk about these other two columns in a second. Let's just go ahead and finish with this column. Um, my cost per hour is the uh, cost per mile of 46 cents per mile times the number of miles I'm doing in an hour, 72. And it comes out with uh, $33.20 per hour is what it's costing me in fuel to move down the road. It's $33.20 per hour. And um, how much am I making per hour? Well, if I'm getting paid $1.30 per mile and I'm doing 72 miles per hour, it's $1.30 times 72, which comes out to $93.60. $93.60 per hour is what I'm making. Before any expenses come out. So what is my net that I'm making per hour? Well, it's my um, $93.60 that I'm making per hour minus my cost per hour. And it comes out to $60.40 per hour. So, these other two columns are the exact same thing, but calculated at different speeds. And I'm making some assumptions here. I'm assuming that if I drop from 72 to 68, that I'm going to jump from 7.6 miles per gallon to 8.5. And I'm assuming that if I drop down to 65 miles per hour, that my miles per gallon will be 9.5. And that's with this 9,000 pound load. We're, we're not talking 45,000 pound loads or anything like that. We're just trying to do a, um, you know, a comparison across the, 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 the same set of parameters. You know, to compare uh, somebody going 72 miles per hour empty versus somebody going 65 miles per hour with 80,000 pounds. That's not a valid comparison. It's it's meaningless. So um, I think I could probably get 9.5 miles per gallon hauling a 9,000-pound load at 65 miles per hour. I think I could. But I haven't actually tested this out. So keep that in mind that these numbers are fantasy. This is me making a, a guesstimate. It's a wild-ass guess. It's, it's a wag. Um... Well, I wouldn't say quite wild ass. I mean, it's it's a, an educated guess. Let's put it that way. So keep that in mind. I want to give clear context here that this is not like scientific statistic stuff. So um, I do have some numbers in here that I'm kind of guessing at. Um, but if this does happen, you know, I get this miles per gallon at 68 and I get this miles per gallon at 65 then the outcome would be that I would save about $5 per mile in fuel cost going 68, and I would save about $9 per mile in fuel cost going 65. But my revenue is also based on, on how many miles I'm doing in an hour. So I'm losing money by going slower as well. So once you uh, take into consideration, like I'm making $93.60 per hour going 72. I'm making 88.40 going 68. And I'm making 84.50 going 65. So once you take into consideration my cost per hour and how much I'm making per hour at these speeds, that's how, come, that's how you come up with these net per hour. So... Um, I'm making net after fuel cost $60.40 per hour going 72 60.4 per hour uh, going 68 and 60.55 per hour going 65 so I'm making just a tiny bit less. It's nearly identical. It's pretty much identical 
between 72 and 68. I'm saving some, and I'm losing a little bit in how much I'm making, and then the two of them combined comes out to where it makes almost no difference at all. But going 65 miles per hour, that does save me about 10 cents per hour. It is incredibly negligible. It is insanely negligible. But if you were to look at just your cost per mile on how much your, your, your fuel cost is up here, of uh, your cost per mile of 46 cents per mile, your cost per mile of 41 cents per mile, and your cost per mile of 37 cents per mile, if you were to look at that, you would think there would be a tremendous difference in how much you're making because of how much you're saving in fuel. Because you're saving nine cents per mile in fuel by dropping from 72 to 65. Nine cents per mile in fuel. It sounds like a lot. But it doesn't really mean that much. So in this scenario, okay, what is this number down here? This number down here is an easy way to tell if you're actually saving money. So um, this is a percentage of this. So everything is being compared against 72 miles per hour. So this tells me that I'm making 99.999999 cents um, I'm making 99.99% of what I would make going 72. So any number less than one tells me that I'm losing money by going slower. I'm not making money. I'm losing money. But if the number is one or higher, that means that I'm making over 100%. So I'm making more money if I go slower. So I'm losing money going 68, but I'm gaining a tiny, 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 tiny bit of money by going 65. So this particular scenario is about the only scenario where you can make money by going slower. The only way you make money going slower is if you're not making very much per mile and your fuel cost is really high. If your fuel cost goes down or if the amount of money you're making per mile goes up, then these numbers... Uh, this is about the most extreme example that I can come up with. In today's market, right now, this is about the most extreme example that I can come up with. And this is the only example in which you actually make more money by going slower. And this is the reason the mega carriers, one of the reasons the mega carriers govern their trucks at such low speeds um, is because they're basing everything off of low revenue and, uh, you know, all, the, the, all this stuff. So it's, the other reason is insurance. It saves them, you know, money on insurance to govern their trucks at a low speed. Uh, but let's change these numbers up a little bit and say that you're making more per mile. So what is my target that I try to make per mile? What I try to make per mile after all the percentage cuts, I try to make $2 per mile. I generally make more than that. So let's just go with two. Let's say that you make $2 a mile instead of $1.30 a mile. Let's say that you're in a decent lease contract or you know, you're whatever, you got your own authority, you're getting good rates off the spot market, whatever your situation is, let's say you're making $2 a mile. I'm not saying the load's paying $2 a mile and you're getting percentage cuts and you're making, you know, 50 cents a mile. I'm saying you are actually making $2 a mile after all the percentage cuts. So you're making two bucks a mile. What happens to the numbers? Well, the faster you go, the more you make. And 
the fuel cost, even leaving the fuel cost really high, that high fuel cost, cannot it can't keep up with how much you're making per mile. Going faster, it outpaces the cost of fuel per mile. So, your net that you're making per hour going 72 is $110.80, 111 bucks. Net per hour going 68, 108 bucks. And your net per hour going 65, 106 bucks. So, you're making more per hour by going at a faster speed. The fuel cost savings is not offsetting um, anything. Now, the other thing to take into consideration here is that when you go faster, you can cover more miles in your hours. And we have a limited number of hours per week that we can work. So, not only are you making more per hour, but you have more hours that you can work in a week. So, it's just, I mean, that's kind of how the, the rate, the, this, you know, rate per hour comes out, is it just, you, you make more money. Let's, let's, let's play, I, <laughs> there's so many things involved here, and this is a, the, this is about as simplistic as I could break it down. So, um, I could get a lot more complicated in all this, but let, let's change some other numbers. When your fuel cost gets lower, then um, these numbers become more, uh, more distant. Like, it becomes even better to run faster. So, um, let's say your fuel cost is 275 That's what I'm paying on this, on this load right here is for fuel cost. I... I Topped off in Oklahoma City at 272 a gallon, and I topped off in Tonopah at 278 a gallon. So 275 a gallon is what I'm paying for fuel on this load. So what are you making per hour? $118 an hour, 114, 111. You're losing money by going slower. So now let's put in the number of what I'm making per mile on the, this load. What am I making per mile on this load? This load pays $4.20 per mile. I'm making $3.09 per mile. So you make $196 per hour going 72, 188 going 68, and 182 going 65. What does all of this mean? <laughs> Let me try to break down what this means in the simplest way that I can. What it means is that unless you're getting absolutely dog shit pay and the fuel prices are absurdly high and you're getting terrible discounts, so there's a huge disparity between your pay and the fuel cost, unless that's is this the case it's better to go faster in what scenario outside of you know you having really shitty pay and high fuel costs um, if what's let's say that you were getting paid really well and you had really low fuel costs are there any scenarios in which it is better to go slower if you have It, okay, let, let me try to word this in a way. If you don't have any incentive for getting there faster, so let's say that you have a load that doesn't deliver for four days, and it's only going to take you one day to, to get there, it's worth it to spend another hour or two on that load and save that fuel because you're not going to make any more money on that load because you're going to have to set for several days. So the scenario in which it's better to go slower is if you have a lot of extra time on the load. It's better to go slower if you have extra time on the load. But 
if you're able to just do load after load after load, then it's better to just go as fast as you can and get that next load and keep rolling. It's more efficient to go fast and do more and more loads than it is to slow down and just go 65 and do loads as you can. The, the only difference, like I said, is that if you just have the extra time, either you don't have another load that you can pick up for two days or something like that, then, um, then you know, you can save a little bit of money by slowing down. But it's very negligible. That Then what that scenario comes down to is what is your time worth to you personally? If you're making $200 an hour, is it worth it for you to take an extra two hours to get to your destination and waste two hours of your time off to save $20 per hour? Is it worth it to save $40 for two hours of your time whenever you're making $200 an hour. Me, personally, I think it's better to just go faster, and I would rather have that two hours of free time to sit here and make YouTube videos for you guys, <laughs> or play video games, or watch TV, or take a shower, or sleep, or whatever. Um, the amount of money I'm saving in fuel cost is so incredibly negligible, in comparison to how much money I'm making, that my time means more to me. So, what I've found by crunching these numbers is that it's not worth it for me to slow down and save a little bit in fuel. Um, until fuel prices, let's put this back down at $2 rate per mile. That's a more reasonable consistent rate per mile that I can run at. What would fuel cost have to get up to for it to start mattering? Let's say $5 a gallon. Still still better. Like right now I'm paying about 275 a gallon. If the amount I'm paying for fuel doubled, would it be better for me to slow down? Still. You can tell right down here by the percentages. They're both below 1. So I'm still losing money by going slower. Let's take it up to eight. There we go. Now it's costing me money. Let's take it down to seven. Still costing me money. Six. Still costing me money. So somewhere between five and six is the happy threshold. So let's do 5.2. Uh, 5.3. It's going to be really close to right around $5.30 per gallon. So if I'm if what I'm running at is $2 per mile, then fuel cost what I'm paying, not the pump price, but what I'm actually paying after discounts would have to get somewhere in the realm of $5.30 per gallon before it would be more you know efficient for me to slow down to 65. At that point, the amount of cost associated with moving the truck down the road is so incredibly high that the amount I'm making um, is uh, is not like dwarfing that. It's not enough to offset it because this five dollars. Um, I, I think the easiest way to 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 show this would be, let me see here. I've already got it broken down. So what we're basically comparing here is my rate per mile. That's $2 per mile. That's how much I'm making versus this cost per mile, my fuel cost, 70 cents per mile. So that breaks down to an hourly rate of what I have in the green and red. My cost per hour is this fuel cost and my um, net per hour is how much I'm making per hour on my rate per mile. So 
at this absurd scenario where fuel cost is just insanely high, my fuel cost is $50 an hour, and I'm making, um, what am I making per hour? I'm making $144 per hour. So, and this down here in the green, that's the difference. That's my $144 an hour minus 50. So, the, the thing is that even at just $2 a mile on the rate per mile, when you're going 72 miles per hour, you're making $144 per uh, per hour. So at $144 per hour, if you're spending, let's go back down to $275 um, a gallon fuel cost. If you're spending $26 an hour in fuel, you're comparing $144 per hour in profit or what you make per hour versus $26 an hour in fuel cost. But when this cost goes up in fuel, to where it starts approaching that $144 per hour, that's whenever it uh, it starts eating into it enough that you should slow down. <laughs> so I, I I'm sorry. I'm trying to like I'm really tired and I'm trying to think of, of a way to simplify this, but um, basically. I've already said what it is basically multiple times, uh, but basically if you're getting paid a decent rate per mile and you're getting, you know, a decent price on fuel. Uh, so if you had like the XPO logistics fuel card, you're probably paying on average $3 uh, per gallon and your rate per mile. If you're doing two, Two dollars a mile. You're doing pretty good. Let's let's do 1.8. Um, at USA Truck, you could you should be able to do a solid 1.8 on your rate per mile if you're booking decent loads, and you're paying three dollars a gallon for fuel on average. Uh, this is what your numbers break down to. It's you know you're making 129 dollars and 60 cents an hour going 72, and um, you know, these are your costs, and then your your net rate per mile, just taking out fuel cost, or your net rate per hour, you're making $101 per hour after fuel cost. If you're going 68, you're making $98 an hour, and if you're going 65, you're making $96 an hour. So, it's always better to go faster. Almost always. <laughs> Uh, once, like, like, I've, like I've displayed here multiple times, if your pay is terrible and your fuel cost is, is, is really high or the fuel cost is just absurdly high, even if you're getting decent pay, then, um, then only in those extremes does going slow matter much, like, does it does it become an issue of being better to be slower? So, anyway, this video is is taking. I'm I'm starting to just repeat myself over and over. Um, so I, I better end this video. So the, the fuel cost breakdown on speeds, and again, these are are mythical magical numbers. Uh, if somebody has real numbers on how much or uh, what your uh, miles per gallon are at various speeds then um, I'll do this against those numbers, and it'll be more realistic uh, if somebody wants to provide that information to me. I didn't bother looking online to, uh, for any of that information, um, but you know, this is the fuel cost uh, breakdown on uh, you know speed. So I'm going to end this video, and I'm going to eat something, then I'm going to go to bed because I'm starting to get to that level of tired where it's hard to concentrate. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.